Welcome to Accelerate, a DLA Piper hosted series focused on AI. During the series, we will help demystify the complexities of AI regulation, risk, and how to harness the opportunity that AI brings to businesses across the globe. Hello, I'm James Clark. I'm a partner in the Data Protection and Privacy Group at DLA Piper and a specialist in the regulation of AI. I'm joined by my colleague, Mohamed. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, James. I am Mohamed Demirjan. I'm a lawyer specialized in data protection in DLA Piper's Brussels office. So James, what are we going to talk about today? Well, Mohamed, we're going to talk about the relationship between privacy and AI. It's a very important relationship and a very close relationship. And some of the things we're going to look at so first of all, you know, why is there such a close relationship between privacy and AI? Um, how is the use of AI already regulated by privacy laws like the GDPR? We'll then move on to look at the relationship between the GDPR and the major new AI law, the EU AI Act. Uh, and then we'll finish off with some practical tips and tricks for companies in terms of how to best manage this relationship between privacy and AI. All right, so let's start with a question. Why privacy is actually relevant for an entire life cycle of an AI system? Yeah, so fundamentally, it's because AI systems are creatures of data, right? They require huge amounts of data, both to train and develop an AI system, and then also during its live operation. Um, and as many people will know, uh, the concept of personal data under data protection laws such as the GDPR is incredibly broad. And that means that very often that data that an AI system will be using will in fact be personal data uh, and therefore automatically regulated under data protection and privacy laws uh, like the GDPR. Uh, and so therefore, if as a company you want to develop an AI system or you want to use an AI system in practice, wherever that AI system might be interacting with personal data, you need to understand and be able to comply with your compliance obligations under laws like the GDPR in order to get the most out of that AI system and to use it um, in a way that is you know, compliant and lawful. Uh, privacy has also affected the regulation on AI uh, because privacy and data protection, as you know, is a technology neutral legislation, which is based on principle based approach. And uh, now we, we have the law in the, in the EU, which is also principle based. Therefore, uh, the, the long history of data protection law, which has been tested in the market by the authorities, have been partially transferred into regulating the AI systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we, as we all know, GDPR has its own data processing principles, accuracy, data minimization, and so on. Uh, and when we look at the AI Act in the recital 27, there are general principles applicable to all AI systems. And uh, we also have the OECD AI principles. And uh, when we compare uh, all these three uh, instruments, we actually see that some of these no nuances and principles are transferable, like transparency, fairness, and integrity and confidentiality under GDPR, which is mostly about data security. And the, the same applies as technical robustness and safety to AI systems. Uh, although some, some nuances might have differences and they, they don't exactly mean the same thing under data protection law and under the AI regulatory scene, uh, it definitely shows that there, there are similarities also from a higher, higher point of view. And organizations who have a strong privacy culture, who have a strong privacy governance mechanism, will definitely have the upper hand and also the ease of complying with, with the new, new AI uh, regulatory scene. Uh, and at the same time, GDPR, as we know, or data protection laws already de facto regulate AI systems. Yeah. When, because as we know, GDPR apply to processing of personal data wholly or partly by automated means, uh, regardless of the underlying system that processes that personal data, which means that there's an inherent relationship between AI systems and data protection laws. Because as you have mentioned, uh, processing personal data is inevitable in most of the situations with regard to AI systems. Therefore, uh, the, there is also that relationship. And when we see, uh, when we look at GDPR Article 22, we see that there is the automated decision making framework, uh, which, which refers to basically decisions that are taken by automated processing activities with, and that, that they are generally AI systems in practice. Therefore, there is that framework uh, also that applies to AI systems solely from the aspect of data protection. 
And let's maybe now focus a bit uh, on the upcoming legislation on the on AI systems in, in Europe, the EU AI Act. Uh, where do we stand nowadays in, with regard to the AI Act and uh, what is the relationship of privacy and AI Act? Yeah, so I'm hoping by now most people will have heard of the AI Act um, and some similarities with GDPR. You know, again, we're talking about a regulation that will apply you know, across the EU with direct effect uh, and also a horizontal law. So will apply to all parts of the economy, you know, all sectors. Um, but it's also importantly a risk based law. Um, so it doesn't you know, regulate all AI systems, but it focuses primarily uh, on certain categories of AI system that are regarded as high risk. Um, and exactly as you've been saying, Mohammed, what I think organizations need to understand is that there is effectively going to be a dual regulatory regime insofar as you know, you're using an AI system that processes personal data, you will need to be aware of your obligations both under the AI Act and under the GDPR. And the AI Act you know, specifically says that it's without prejudice to GDPR, so it intends GDPR to continue to apply um, alongside it. And I think one way of understanding that is to appreciate that the two laws have slightly different philosophies. So the AI Act is sort of first and foremost a product safety law, really. It's about ensuring that the AI systems are built safely. And the GDPR is first and foremost a fundamental rights law that's about giving rights to individuals in relation to the use of their data. And so that means the two laws can work in harmony you know, with the AI Act on the, on the safety side and the GDPR providing the rights for individuals when an AI system is used in a way that impacts um, those individuals. Uh, maybe a couple of other points of interplay between the two to pull out. Um, so firstly, you know, understanding what role you play under the GDPR. We're all familiar with concepts like a controller or a processor, but then understanding how those map on to the roles you might play under the AI Act. So are you a provider of a system? Are you developing a system? Or are you just a deployer or a user of a system? And how does that relate to your role as either a controller or a processor um, under the GDPR? Um, and then also thinking about if you are a provider of an AI system, some of the conformity assessments that you will have to undertake before you're permitted to deploy that AI system and put it onto the market. Um, and the relationship that may have to existing obligations you perform under the GDPR, like data protection impact assessments, for example. Um, I mean, so Mohammed, do you want to expand a bit on that on that interplay between the two laws? Indeed, the AI Act is a unique legislation because, as you have said, James, it is a product safety legislation, but the Act itself also refers to fundamental rights. Yes. That that's therefore uh, that we have a unique mix actually, and when we we see that through through some obligations in the AI Act, and uh, for example, there is the fundamental rights impact assessment, which is basically for for operators of certain high risk AI systems. Uh, they will need to basically investigate the risks of that AI system with regard to the, the, the fundamental rights of the individuals that will be subject to that use or they will somehow face this AI system uh, while uh, it, is, it is deployed. Uh, and we, we have the DPIA, Data Protection Impact Assessment, which is basically which, which carries basically the same philosophy as the Fundamental Rights Impact Assessment, whereas Fundamental Rights Impact Assessment is not only uh, limited to the right to data protection, it, it, is, it definitely covers more fundamental rights uh, as number. But we have, we have, we, we see the similarities, and at the same time, uh, we should also mention, you know, every legislation needs enforcers, and now we see that the data protection authorities within the EU are being considered to to, to be appointed as market surveillance authorities, which is, which is, which will be basically the enforcers of the AI Act and. On, on the EU level, the EDPS, European Data Protection Supervisor, has been appointed yeah. to uh, oversee the application of AI Act for EU bodies and agencies. And if that happens, we will see that the importance of privacy uh, will, will, only, will only rise in, in the enforcement of the AI Act as well. Yeah, yeah. no, I think you're absolutely right, Mohammed. And I mean, maybe just to finish off, I'm sure everyone would appreciate if we maybe just gave some sort of practical tips and tricks, right? So you've got this complex relationship between data protection law, privacy law, and the AI Act and AI law. Um, what are just some practical tips for organizations about how to best manage that relationship? 
Uh, well, I would definitely start with mapping out AI systems in my organization. And I would also try to see uh, where, where, what is the risk classification of, of a specific AI system that I am, I am using. And following that, uh, the privacy by design and default philosophy and mentality uh, is, is crucial to have because if you would involve a privacy professional into an AI project at an early phase, you would be capable of basically uh, finding, the, finding the open points, finding the pain yeah. points in the projects with regard to personal data because you will, it's very likely that the, sy the AI system that you deploy will not be able to uh, escape from processing personal data. Uh, and maybe one more, which is the training aspect, training phase of an AI system. Uh, in, in the training phase of AI systems, we, we see that there is a lot of per personal data, especially in uh, large language models. They are, they are trained on open, open data, which, we, which are uh, available on the internet. Uh, so involving a data protection professional there, even if you are not the provider, but the deployer who could ask questions about the training of an AI system to the providers would uh, make you less risky, basically would make your deployment less risky and uh, would, would benefit you. And uh, what, what, what would be your suggestions? James? Yeah, so I think those are excellent. I mean, I have two that I always mention to clients. I think number one is think about the ways you can harness your existing approach to data protection compliance, your existing GDPR compliance program. Mm -hmm. You know, part of that will be about data mapping. That's useful for AI compliance. Part of it will be about risk assessments like DPIAs. As you said, that's useful for things like the fundamental rights impact assessment. So there's a lot there in your existing program you can you can repurpose and augment for AI Act compliance. And then probably the final one um, is AI literacy, right? So in the same way that you know during GDPR we had to train up people within the organisation from the board all the way down to understand what is personal data, what is this concept of data protection law. We have to do something similar um, when it comes to AI to get people just to understand the key concepts and the key principles. Uh, yeah, and, and as we've seen, the close relationship between those principles and data protection principles. Um, so yeah, lots of food for thought for organisations, and hopefully that sort of demonstrates this this very special relationship and interplay between data protection and privacy law on the one hand, um, and AI law that's emerging on the other hand. So thank you for your time, Mohammed. Thank you for thank you, James. And have a good day. Thank you for listening to this episode of Accelerate by DLA Piper. For more on AI, check out our YouTube channel for more videos like this and click subscribe to stay informed. You can also take a look at our AI focus page, dlapiper.com, for further insight and thought leadership and get in touch direct to discuss how we can support you in navigating the complexities of AI.